So he's been spending time integrating and talking about the meaning of double integrals, the iterated integral. And every problem we've looked at so far has been in terms of x and y or y and x. So it turns out, depending on the function we're integrating or the region of integration, um, there are other coordinate systems and polar coordinates are a coordinate system we should be pretty well familiar with. But I want to do two things, one in this video and another coming up later, is just doing a little prep work for what's it going to mean to integrate if we use polar coordinates. So here's the little question. So think of this as a piece of pie, a slice of pizza. You know, it's restaurant style because it has too much crust on it. You know, a good pizza may not have that much crust at the end. But we're interested in what is the area of that crust-like section. So to do that, I'm going to refer back to an old geometry formula. And there's another method of doing what I'm about to do. But I'm going to use geometry right now. So what if we were just taking a slice of pizza, the entire slice, and we wanted to find the area of that slice of pizza? So. We'll come back to this picture in a moment. The area of a circle is, of course, pi multiplied by the radius squared. And, well, we have a slice of pizza, so we don't have the entire, we have a fraction of it. And what we know is we have uh, whatever theta is measured in radians. Um, and we know that there are two pi radians around the whole circle, so theta out of two pi is the fraction of the whole multiplied by the area and this little expression reduces to one half r squared theta. We're going to use this formula to calculate how much area is here by finding the area of this and the area of the entire slice and then subtracting them to get our shaded region. So here's what we need. I'm going to establish that this slice here has a radius from the origin to a point halfway between here and here. And we're going to call that distance delta r, the change in radius. So this would be half of the delta r, and this would also be half of the delta r. So this distance from here to here would be r plus half of delta r. But then from the origin to this point would be r minus the half of delta r because we're going to subtract the half delta. So again, find the area of this, find the area of the entire slice using this formula should give us the area of this region in between. So here we go. When you write it out, it's a fun little algebra expression. One half the radius squared delta r is, whoops, this one is that one, minus this one. And I'm gonna just let you look at the terms. Each of these is that formula, but written out to represent the small radius and the large radius. Common factors, one half and delta theta. And because this is just a little uh, introduction, I'm gonna let you check these algebraic steps. But if we were to use um, FOIL or some other form of multiplication of two binomials, squaring the binomials, we would get r squared plus r multiplied by delta r plus one-fourth delta r squared here. And this will be the same expression except for it will be with the subtraction sign here. And there are all kinds of like terms here, r squared minus r squared is zero. One-fourth of delta r squared minus one-fourth of delta r squared is zero r delta r minus a negative r delta r is 
2 times r delta r. Half of 2 is 1, and we get to this expression. Now, why do we even care? This is the measurement of that region right in here. Well, here is why we care. In integration, these little delta values get quite small. The angle is going to be small. To be small. If you recall, when we do the definite integral in Calc 1, we divide into small little rectangles. We know these rectangles aren't perfect, but the smaller they get and the more that we have, the closer we get to approximating the actual, actual area. Well, we have this notation for the double integral. Generic notation I introduced was we have a region and there's an area that we're looking at in this region and then this is the third dimension above it. We could either measure it dy dx or dx dy. Base times height gives us area. Base times height gives us area. Well, if we write this in polar coordinates, the x in the function gets replaced with r multiplied by cosine of theta, and the y is r sine theta. But our dy dx, or the dx dy, will become this r times dr times d theta. We write it in our integral. A little geometric derivation. Hope you enjoyed it.